Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the Grow Wild project webinar. So we might have some young people that are interested in applying that have joined us today, but we also might have some supporting organisations that are interested in supporting a project. So um, this presentation will be relevant to both those groups. So yeah. So firstly, an introduction to the Grow Wild team. My name is Gaia. I'm the Grow Wild Engagement and Training Officer, and I'll just let everyone else introduce themselves quickly. Hello, everyone. I'm Chloe Booth. I'm the Grow Wild Engagement and Training Manager. Hi, everyone. I'm Chloe Agar. I'm the Grow Wild Engagement Assistant. Hi, everyone. I'm Robin, and I'm the Grow Wild Communications Executive. Great, thank you guys. Um, so just going to start on some housekeeping. I just saw a quick uh, question pop in the chat. The session is being recorded and uh, the recordings will be sent to you all via email shortly after the session uh, and it will also be uploaded to our website so you can catch up then. Um, if you would like to turn some captions on, if you just click the three dots on the top right hand corner of your screen and click language and speech and then turn on live captions, you'll be able to get those. If you would like to submit a question, please use the Q&A function that's on the top of the screen. Uh, we will answer as many questions as we can. And if we can't answer any, we will follow it up with an email. Um, so please do not share any personal information via the Q&A function. We won't be able or we won't be able to publish your question. And um, finally, if there's any like individual or like very specific questions about your project idea or your organisation, it's probably best to contact us directly so we can kind of give you tailored advice to whatever that query is. So uh, what will we be covering in today's session? <clears throat> So firstly, I'm going to be introducing Grow Wild and letting you know a little bit about the youth projects. Then we're going to look at UK native plants and fungi, uh, previous projects, how to apply the role of supporting organisations and the Q Young Environmental Leader Award. And we'll end on um, a Q&A. So introducing Grow Wild. So um, we're part of Q Gardens. And uh, Kew is famous for its botanic gardens in Richmond in southwest London. And we also have a sister site in Wakehurst in Sussex. And this is home to the Millennium Seed Bank. So we have over 400 scientists working here. And our mission is to understand and protect plants and fungi for the well-being of Earth people and the future of all life on Earth. So um, where we sit as Grow Wild is in the learning and participation department. So we support people across the UK to grow together, learn about nature and take positive action to benefit their local community and biodiversity. So what is the Youth Project Brief? Um, in short, the brief is um, to come up with an idea that celebrates and shares why UK native plants and or fungi are so special. And uh, for anyone worrying, do I need to be a plant and fungi expert? No, not at all. We're enthusiastic about getting applications from everyone. So even if you don't have particular knowledge in the area, please apply because you will learn more. So what do you get in return from us? Firstly, probably most importantly, get the £500 grant. So this can be used on anything really, materials, equipment, resources, even training for yourself. Uh, it's just important to remember that you can't use the money to pay your, um, an applicant can't use the money to pay themselves a wage. Um, then you get support and online training. So we'll deliver training sessions to develop your skills and you'll also get support from our team. You'll have opportunities to connect to people. So join a community of young nature enthusiasts completing projects all across the UK. And then finally, um, you get an opportunity to take part in the Young Environmental Leader Award. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about this later in more detail. So um, what is kind of like a, a winning project in our eyes? Um, we want a project that firstly engages other people. So um, we'd like you to share your project with at least 100 people. This does sound like a lot of people I know, but it doesn't mean um, directly you can um, 
do it in person or online. So it can be through social media and things like that. So think about how can you engage your communities, people you know, or people online. Um, and then benefiting others. So think about the posit positive impact that your project will have on other people and tell us about it. So think, think will people's communities look better? Will people have uh, be able to learn something about plants and fungi? Will they have an opportunity to connect with each other? Um, please make good use of the £500 grant. So kind of tell us how you're going to use the money to make the biggest impact. And then um, finally, just having the wow factor. So if you come up with something original, think of something exciting, we want to hear about it. Um, we're especially excited about ideas that we kind of haven't had before. Um, and Chloe will talk a little bit more about some past projects we've had if you want some um, features of that. So yeah, if you want more tips on creating a winning application, please visit the six tips page on um, the Grow Wild website. So I'll hand over to Chloe now, who's going to talk a little bit about UK native plants and fungi. Thank you, Gaia. So as guys mentioned, we're not expecting you to be experts on UK native plants and fungi already, but we thought we'd just talk you through a little bit why we love them so much and why Grow Wild's mission is to bring people together to value and enjoy them. So, uh, when we say UK native plants or fungi, um, we mean that's a scientific term for a species which has arrived in the UK in independently of human intervention. So these species are really important because they've co-evolved here for thousands of years with their um, other native wildlife. So they're really important for creating the biodiverse um, ecosystems that we rely on. Uh, they provide vital food sources, sources and shelter for pollinating insects, birds and other wildlife as well. So on the screen here for an example, we've got a yellow rattle, which is a native wildflower, and that's the food plant for the larvae of the rare grass rivulet moth. And that's what we find. Lots of rare, um, lots of native species are food plants for rare pollinators. Um, pollinators are really important for food production. So without lots of diverse, healthy pollinators, our food security would be at risk. Um, including plants like the bramble there, which I'm sure you all know about. That's where we get a blackberry from, and that is uh, pollinated by insects like bees and butterflies and moths. Um, and uh, that is an example of one of the foods that uh, relies on our pollinators. Um, the other reason we really want to champion UK native species and plants is because they're in decline. So half of Britain and Ireland's native plants have declined since the 1950s, such as this harebell that you can see an example of on the screen, which is a food plant for the um, small blue butterfly, and that is sadly declining. So that's why we're joining, um, asking you to join us on our mission. Um, we are really lucky to have a, a diverse um, range of native plants in this country, so we really want to champion them. Uh, fungi as well, we're really lucky to have lots of fungi in this country and um, we want you to celebrate them. So um, underneath the soil, there is a vast network of what we call mycelium, which is kind of like the roots of fungi um, that helps them survive and which is actually vital to a lot of life on Earth, if not all life on Earth. So fungi is really important for lots of things, including decomposition, so they break down organic matter. Uh, they also form mycorrhizal relationships with plants. So uh, we think that about 90% of plants rely on relationships with fungi um, to survive. So when I say mycorrhizal relationship, what I mean is that the fungi and the plant have a relationship beneath the soil where they exchange nutrients and sugars so that both of them can survive. Um, fungi is also really important for soil health. Um, and stability. It's also an amazing food source for us and for lots of different animals. Um, it's used for medicine, um, also as a biological control, so um, in agriculture as an environmentally friendly um, pesticide, and in bioremediation, which means um, sort of breaking down pollutants and helping us um, get rid of pollution. So there are over 15,000 species of fungi in the UK, which is amazing. Um, I'm sure you've seen some of them. There's some examples here. The fly agaric, the red one, uh, which you've probably seen in fairy tales and things like that. And um, the bearded tooth fungus, also known as lion's mane, which is known for its medicinal properties. 
Um, the green elf cup is really beautiful. It's an amazing color blue. You might see that in woodlands around the UK and chicken of the woods as well, another colorful one that um, you can see, I think particularly on oak. Um, yeah. So featuring UK native plants and fungi in your project, there's lots of ways you could do that. You could be growing them, but mostly we're just looking for you to celebrate their importance. So that could be whatever kind of project you choose to do um, anyway. Uh, we do want to note that um, we want people to enjoy nature, but leave it where it is. So we don't tend to encourage foraging of wild plants and fungi. If you did have a project idea that was to do with foraging, please don't be disheartened. Do get in touch with us and we could talk to you about what maybe some alternatives would be. Um, and remember, you don't need to be an expert, so you can learn about UK native species through your project. We don't expect that you'll already know everything. Uh, if you're looking for more inspiration and uh, places to find out more about UK native species, here are some uh, websites you can visit, including the Q website, um, and also get in touch with us if you can't find the resources that you need. So quickly, we'll just have a look at some previous projects to show you the range um, of projects that we have had in our youth grants. So really, your project could be anything. Um, we've had, here are some examples on the screen. We've had a previous participant who did a knitting project. So they held knitting um, uh, workshops in the community with the wider community where everyone knitted uh, plants and fungi. And they also had knit and natter sessions and that was really successful. We've had in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you can see an album cover. And that was um, a punk EP that was created inspired by fungal networks. Um, on the left, you can see there's a sculpture with lots of different types of fungi on it. So we've had a really diverse range. Um, you can uh, find out more about our previous projects um, on our website. So growwild.q.org forward slash previous youth projects. Um, I'll just dive now into a couple more projects that we've had a little bit, bit more deeply. So Mushroom for All was a project by Matty with the Hoxton Trust Community Garden, and it was built around connecting the local people of the community garden to the importance of fungi in our lives and ecosystems. So Matty held lots of different workshops, including a fungi paper making workshop, which involved getting chestnut mushrooms and oyster mushrooms, mixing them with um, old newspaper and creating new, new paper, which was a really um, inspiring way to think about fungi and the materials that, that we get from different fungi and mushrooms. Uh, they also held a recipe sharing workshop and a mushroom identification walk for queer young people in Hackney. So lots of interesting ideas there. Uh, you can read about uh, Matty's project on our blog. Uh, it's called mushroom for all at growworld.q.org forward slash blog. Another example was Wildflower Wonders. Um, and in this one, Rahul, a medical student, worked with uh, his university, King's College London, um, to create a community wildflower garden on the campus. So he brought everyone in, in the whole campus community together and everyone uh, grew their own wildflowers and lots of people took their wildflowers home as well. So that's another lovely project. And if you want to uh, read about it in more detail, we've done an interview uh, with the participant and you can read that on our blog as well. So, yeah, lots of... Um, lovely ideas there for you. If you have a project and you're not sure if it's right or you're concerned about it, please do get in touch with us and talk to us. And I will now pass over to Chloe. Thank you very much, Chloe. Um, so I hope that's given you some ideas and maybe got your kind of creative juices flowing a little bit. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit more about how to actually make your application once you've thought of your idea. So just a few more sort of details about eligibility. So um, for the first time this year, we're offering the chance to apply to do a project as an individual or as part of a group of up to six people. So this is new for us to offer a group project and we're really excited about it. Um, everybody, regardless of whether you're doing your project on your own or as part of a group, needs to be aged 14 to 25 on the closing date, which is the 19th of March. If you are under 18, please do make sure you get your um, parent or guardian to give permission before you apply. So please have a chat with them um, before starting your application and make sure that's OK. 
everybody who applies also needs to have a supporting organization. So this is a non-for-profit organization who will help you with your project. They'll be your kind of day-to-day -day support. They'll also receive the £500 grant on your behalf and help you to deliver the project safely. Some examples of a, a, su a suitable supporting organization could be um, sorry Robin <laughs> could be an educational institution so for instance that could be your school your college or university um, I'm afraid you can't have a primary school as a supporting organization and that's because of the age range of this program is aimed at 14 plus um, it, your supporting organization could also be a youth or community group or even a charity um, so have a think about any organizations that you might be connected to already perhaps an arts group um, or environmental group your group can also be um, an organisation that's run through the local authorities or your local council. If, if your um, you know, potential supporting organisation is part of the council, that's OK as well. Thanks. OK, so part of the application involves making a two minute video. So I'm just going to run through some of the ingredients that we would really like you to include in your video. And then on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the practicalities of making your video. So we really want you to tell us all about your project idea. That's the main thing. So we really want to be excited by what you're presenting. So tell us what you'll do um, and why you want to do it. If you can come up with a catchy name for your project, that's always great. And if you're completing your project as part of a team, you could have a team name too. So have a think about that. We'd really like you to tell us how you'll use the 500 pounds. So you don't have to go into huge detail. We're not looking for you know, a really detailed budget here, but just to tell us the sorts of things you'd like to buy or pay for. Um, we know things can change in future, so don't worry if you're not entirely sure of the cost of some of the things, some of the things at this point, but just give us an idea of how you'd like to use the money. Please tell us who will be involved in your project. So who will you be working with? Will there be other people in your community that hopefully you're going to be inspiring through your project? Who will benefit? And is there anybody in particular that's going to help you, maybe aside from your supporting organisation, uh, perhaps an expert you'd like to talk to? Um, if there's anybody like that, please tell us about it. We'd also like to know where you'll be doing your project. So if you've got a particular space in mind for doing it, a venue, um, I don't know, a local park, somewhere that you've got in mind, please tell us where that will be um, so we understand a bit more about how, where you'll be doing your activities and um, the sorts of activities you'll be doing there. And finally, but very importantly, following on from what we've just been learning about, um, please do tell us how your project will celebrate UK native plants and or fungi. So don't worry, you don't have to try and cover off both if you don't want to. You could pick plants or fungi, um, but please tell us how you'll be celebrating them. Thanks, Robin. So, OK, that's some of the ingredients. But as you're thinking about making your video, here's a bit more about some of the sort of practicalities of it. Um, so we really don't want you to be intimidated about making a film. Um, we really just want something really simple. Um, you don't need any fancy equipment. Just recording on a smartphone is absolutely fine. We're really interested in your ideas much more than your filmmaking skills. If you don't want to be on camera and you know we appreciate that not everybody wants to be, that's absolutely fine too. So you don't have to be in the video. Other examples of things you could do involve maybe filming your project space and talking about your ideas um, or maybe filming something that inspires your project. You could provide a voiceover or even some subtitles if you prefer. Um, so you think about those things that inspire you, where you'd like to do it or who you'd want to be involved. Um, another thing you can do building on that is perhaps interview some other members of your group or your wider community and ask them to share why they're interested in the project or why they think it would be a good idea. If you like making slideshows, so for example, making a PowerPoint, um, you could do one of those with images and then record that. So either with a voiceover or some captions. So there are quite a few different ways that you can go about the video. If you're worried about it at all, please do get in touch with us and we can suggest some other alternatives. And also if, if making video is very difficult for you for specific access needs, that's absolutely fine. Please contact us and um, we'll support you to make your application in a different way. 
if you are featured, sorry Robin, <laughs> let's go back one. If you are making um, a video featuring people, um, please do make sure that you get consent from them. So everybody featured needs to give consent to be filmed and for and to understand that the video will be shared with us at Q. And if anybody is under 18, you must make sure that their parent or guardian has given consent for them to take part. Once you've finished your video, um, you'll share it with us via our application form, which is on our website. We don't ask you to actually upload the video file itself. Um, we'd like you to include a link to your video, please. Um, some of the ways you can go about creating a link for your video might be through uploading it to YouTube or Vimeo first. Um, if you do decide to do that, please just check the privacy settings um, and that's to make sure it's not discoverable by anybody else if you don't want it to be. And also just to make sure that, you know, we can actually access it. Um, so perhaps get a friend to help you with testing the video link. So that's a bit about the video. <clears throat> the other part to applying is the ap actual application form. So as I've mentioned, um, that's online. Um, within the form, you'll be asked to provide your contact details and also those of the person who's your designated um, contact at your supporting organisation. So we suggest having them on hand or in contact when you're applying so that you can make sure you've got all the information you need from them. It's important that you and your supporting organisation can be contactable by Grow Wild throughout the summer. Um, and if you've got any sort of big sort of chunks of time when you know you're going to be away, for instance, a holiday, um, it's really important that you let us know um, so we, we, we know how to reach you. If you're applying as a group, um, we'll ask you to nominate one person to be your group representative. So they'll be the main point of contact for us for your group, and they'll also be um, involved in signing some of the paperwork along with your supporting organisation. Um, you'll also need to provide in the application form the names and dates of birth of everybody else in your group. So before you get started on the form, just make sure they're really up for it and they're happy for you to include that information. Once you've made your application, you'll receive an email to let you know if you've been successful or not by the end of April. So please keep an eye on your emails. Thank you, Robin. OK, so um, as Guy has sort of said at the start, we know we might have a mix of people joining the session today. So potentially some applicants and also some organisations thinking of supporting applicants. So in this section, we're going to talk a little bit more about the role of the, the supporting organisation, um, particularly for those who are thinking of maybe helping some young people. So we talked a little bit already about what sorts of organisations can support um, our projects. Um, do check out our website because we've got a full breakdown on there in our guidance of everything that you need to consider to make sure that you are eligible. Um, but the important thing to remember is that we can only have non-profit organisations um, as a supporting organisation. We also need um, the organisation to have a bank account. Um, and that's important because we need to be able to pay the grant. Um, we don't pay the grant to the young person directly. It goes to the supporting organisation so that they can help them with spending the grant. Um, so you do need to have a bank account in the name of your organisation. And we need to we need a named individual at your organisation. So it's important to think about whether you've got somebody with the time to support the project during during the summer. It, we run until the end of October. So we need to have somebody in your organisation who's available to help the group or the young person in that time. The amount of support a young person or group may need could vary hugely. Um, so it's really important that you discuss it together before applying to make sure you're all clear about what will be um, required and the sort of support that the young person or group might need. We quite often get asked whether supporting organisations can assist with several projects. And yes, you, you definitely can. So if you've got several young people who'd like to run projects or several groups, um, they can all apply and name you as their supporting organisation as long as their projects are distinctly different. Um, if they want to do very similar things, then we suggest sort of combining them as um, one group application. Um, but if they want to do different things, then yes, you definitely can support multiple young people. Thank you. OK, and a little bit more. Um, so again, responsibility to support your organisation, the planning and application stage, as we've just mentioned, um, do discuss the project idea and what's involved before kind of getting further down the line. Um, 
sometimes applicants need the young applicants need a little bit of guidance around what's a realistic project to complete within the period um, again this depends a little bit on their sort of age or experience um, so we we do ask the supporting organization to provide some guidance when making the application um, so that it's a realistic project if the project is successful you'll receive the grant money you'll be supporting with the project delivery um, and the other important aspect is around health and safety and safeguarding um, so we do ask that um, supporting organizations have the policies and procedures in place uh, the staff and um, volunteers who have received the training um, to really make sure that the young person or group can complete their project safely if your uh, application is successful we do ask for some documents to be sent to us so this is after the application has been um, sort of submitted and um, chosen uh, we'll be in touch with you and ask you to send us um, some some documents these include a copy of your safeguarding policy and procedures a copy of your constitution or an equivalent document that really just explains your organization's purpose um, and what, what you're all about um, and evidence of your bank account so we just need to make sure that the, the bank details that you share with us match the name of your organization um, and these are just some final eligibility checks that we'll do um, prior to paying the grant If your organization is going to be working with under 18s um, or vulnerable adults, or you know that the project is going to be engaging those audiences, um, then we, we do ask that you really support around this, uh, particularly uh, making sure that any under 18s who want to apply, um, or participate in a project, be in the video, have all got parental and guardian, guardian consent in place. And also, we, we do ask that as your, under your role as a supporting organisation that you safeguard any under 18s or vulnerable adults during the project activities. Um, so this, this includes, as we mentioned, making sure that staff and volunteers have had appropriate training, have had um, DBS checks if required, um, and that activities are supervised where needed. If you're supporting an application from a young person or a group with additional needs, then we really encourage you to contact us. Um, we can suggest lots of ways to tailor the application so it's um, sort of appropriate for them. And also we can discuss the best way to communicate uh, with the project applicants and you during the project so they have the best experience. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Gaia, who's going to talk a little bit about the Young Environmental Leader Award. Thank you, Chloe. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Young Environmental Leader Award that Q offers. Uh, we like to call it Yellow because that's a little bit easier. Um, so this is an award that recognises your leadership skills and demonstrates and you, that you demonstrate doing a Grow Wild youth project. So it is optional, but we really recommend that anyone doing a youth project should sign up because it's a fantastic opportunity to get an accredited award from Q. So uh, what do you have to do? Uh, essentially, the award explores nine leadership qualities and you'll have to demonstrate your you develop these by submitting some plans and some reflections of how things went during your project. So uh, you can do the award individually or if you've signed up to um, the youth projects as part of a group, you can do it with your group as well. And um, why do it? Essentially, it's designed to complement your youth project. So this means that you've already done the hard bit by completing your youth project. So you might as well do that little bit extra and get the Young Environmental Leader Award. Uh, you'll be supported by us through online training and with resources, and you will hopefully have developed your leadership skills as well. And um, finally, it's just a great opportunity to have recognition from Q on your CV or portfolio. So um, yeah. That's a bit about the Young Environmental Leader Award. In terms of any questions, um, please obviously pop them in the Q&A chat uh, or chat, um, as I'm sure you have been throughout the webinar. But also, if you have more specific questions, um, please contact us um, either via email or by phone. Our email is hellogrowwild at q.org. And um, we're available to answer the phone Monday to Friday, nine to five. So please get in touch. We're a very friendly team. I'm going to hand over to Robin now, who's going to um, take us through the Q&A questions. Thank you very much, everyone, for um, talking through the presentation there. And thank you, Gaia. 
Um, so there were a few questions that were pre-submitted um, when people registered for the webinar. So I'm just going to run through some of um, the answers that we've got. Um, if I don't provide an answer to your question right now, um, it's either because um, we've already answered it somewhere else in the webinar today, or um, it might be that we need some more information. So we'll follow up via email with those pre-registered questions. Um, so kicking it off, we've got can projects um, be for public spaces? The answer is yes, but you will need permission from the landowner um, and the best way to obtain um, to evidence this is to get it in a letter or an email, um, but make sure that you have it in writing. Um, although we won't ask you to submit this as part of your application form, uh, we may need to ask to see this at some point in the project um, or just in case anything goes wrong. So um, please make sure that you have a copy of that. Um, can the grant be used for public liability insurance? Um, so we do require all supporting organisations to have public liability insurance in place that is suitable for the proposed project. Um, if you have any further questions around this, please get in touch, um, send us an email or give us a ring. The details are um, on the screen at the moment um, and we can provide you with some more specific advice if um, if that hasn't fully answered it for you. Um, so we've got some questions about the budget. So how does the management of the budget work? Um, money will be sent to the supporting organisation um, and ideally the um, applicant, the young person, the group, um, they will then create a shopping list essentially of all of the things that they um, require for their project and um, then the supporting organisation will pay for it directly. Um, we've just found that that is the best and safest and most accessible way of um, making sure that all of the applicants can have access to the funds. Um, so can we use a grant to match fund a grant we might get elsewhere? Um, so the answer to this one is that um, a couple of parts, but um, if you were successful in getting a, a £500 youth grant, yes, uh, we would be perfectly happy with you using that to obtain match funding from elsewhere. Um, but the caveat being that the youth project you are doing, that should not be reliant on um, any additional unobtained funding in order to complete it. So if you require the match funding to be able to make your project happen, then I'm afraid that wouldn't be eligible in this case. Um, but if you have a project idea that you can complete with the £500 youth grant um, and you are just looking to expand on that, do new things, um, maybe do a bit more than you had originally planned with some additional match funding, um, something like that would be absolutely fine. But um, for any other kind of funding questions like that, um, again, feel free to get in touch um, and then we can have a chat about some of the more specific um, situations. Um, so can the grant be used as part payment towards the cost of our project? So again, um, like I said before, it needs the project needs to be fully sustainable on the youth on the five hundred pound youth grant. Um, but again, please get in touch. Um, uh, it sounded like that one. It might be that the project idea is part of something slightly bigger, so we'd need a bit more information to really know how to give a more accurate answer. Um, is there any access support for disabled and neurodivergent people? Um, so we're very pleased to make adjustments um, to the application process, um, anything like that to accommodate any specific access requirements that um, any young people might have in order to engage with the youth grants um, uh, and especially the submission um, process as that's the bit that you know we can make more direct um, adjustments with if you need those. Um, regarding the project itself, um, 
obviously we are open to a full range of ideas. So um, whatever your project idea is, if that um, works for you and that works for the needs that you have or um, any particular ways of working that you have, that is also absolutely fine. And that's part of the reason that we have the supporting organisation um, system in place so that there is someone um, there kind of a bit more on the ground that you can have more regular contact with to support you um, with any other things that you might need. But again, um, if you'd like to chat with us, if you have any specific needs or ideas about the kind of support you'd like, um, please get in contact with us and we can chat that through with you a bit more. Um, for working young people, do you have tips on planning and delivering a project while working full time? Um, so our tips are to ensure that your project is realistic. Um, think about how you can use your spare time to have the most impact. Um, uh, could you get other people involved so that you're not solely responsible for the delivery? How can you rely on other um, support and networks and things to, to make it happen, to give yourself a bit more flexibility? Um, also, communicate with your supporting organisation. Let them know what kind of help you think you're going to need. And also, then you can talk a bit more and see um, what resources um, they might have access to or people they have access to that might be able to help you with any issues surrounding uh, working alongside doing the project. Um, how many people need to be involved? So we suggest that the project will have um, impact on at least 100 people. Now, um, this could be direct. Um, so it could be that you have gone out and you have done an event and 100 people have come, that is great. But also that could be indirect. It could be that you're um, creating something um, like a film or some resources that are then shared amongst people. Um, you know, there are lots of different ways that we can measure impact. Um, so please don't be too intimidated um, by that number. And again, if you are concerned about that at all, you can chat to us and your supporting organisation about that and we can um, see if there's any advice we can give you on making that happen. Um, there is a question here, can the supporting organisation be a CIC? And I might need to just hand over to Chloe Booth for that one. Hello. Um, yes, that's absolutely fine. CICs are eligible to apply as a supporting organisation. Thank you very much. Um, and then there's just a few more questions that have come through in the chat. So we've got, um, can the project be located anywhere in the UK? And yep, the answer is yes. Um, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, absolutely fine. We love to try and get a nice big range um, and see projects all over the country. So absolutely yes. Um, and let me just have a double check of the Q&A. Um, so yes, um, the minimum age for the youth grants is 14. So I'm afraid that we won't, uh, we can't accept um, applications for projects led by people any younger than this um, for this programme, I'm afraid. Um, we have a question about signage. So as a supporting organisation, we would be interested in creating some sort of permanent display or signage to go around the site. Um, would this be possible as they are a visitor attraction, but still a non-profit? Um, it may be that I, my initial thoughts are that if this is about the project that you are running, um, that that would be OK, but I think that's something where it would be useful for us to talk a bit further and see um, exactly what you're thinking. So, yeah, please get in touch with us about that one and we can work out some of the um, some of the details to give you an, a more accurate response to that one. Um, and then um, we have a question. Can an application be made by the supporting organisation? Um, so with that one, I'm assuming you mean just made by the supporting organisation as opposed to the supporting organisation helping the 
um, young person or the group to make an application. Um, and Chloe, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, thanks. So we do need to have a named young person or a named group as part of the application. And that's because we really want these projects to be as youth led as possible. Um, with a caveat to that, that we completely understand that there's a re real range of um, levels of support that young people need with the project. And it might be that in some instances, they really need a lot of day to day interaction with their supporting organization to deliver the project and to lead it. Um, but we, we do require there to be at least one named young person as an applicant. So um, we, I'm afraid we couldn't accept an application that was just purely in the name of the support organization. Thank you very much for help there Chloe. Um, I think that we have covered all of the questions that we have got through today. Um, so if you do have any further questions or if any pop up later, um, if you are going through the application process, oh sorry we just have one more. Um, we are a charity that also helps um, local youth so have eligible youngsters to work with Oh, I think, sorry, I think that was off the back of uh, Chloe's comment there. But yeah, absolutely fine for charity supporting local young people. That's exactly what we, that's exactly the kind of group we're looking for um, to be a supporting organisation. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, everyone. If you have any other questions at any point um, in the application process, um, please, you can either send an email to hellogrowwild at q.org or you can phone us on 07824104632. That is between a kind of standard working hours um, that we will be responding um, to any of those. Um, and this, um, as we said at the start, this session has been recorded um, and it will be automatically sent out to everyone that has signed up to the webinar today. So you should receive um, a copy of that in your inbox shortly. Um, and we will also be posting it on the website. So if there are any other people that um, you know that may have liked to have come but missed out today, um, you, you'll be able to share the link with them so that they can see it as well. Thank you very much everyone for attending. Um, it's been a really great turnout and we hope that that's been helpful for you. We look forward to seeing all of your youth grant applications. Have a nice day. Bye.